Morning all. Just a, a reminder, there's no embargo on this press conference this morning. Um, we're working to a bit of a hard stop as well, so if you can keep it to a couple of questions each, simultaneous translation is available on Zoom only. And we'll uh, we'll start with talk sport on Zoom and then we'll return back to the room here at Seagrave. So Jason, do you want to kick us off? Cheers, James. Good morning, Casper. Hope you're well. Morning. Um, what kind of game do you expect then on Thursday with it being goalless going into the second leg? Expect a tough game. Um, they're what second in the league, only a few points behind uh, behind Ajax. So they're they're a proven good team. Um, I think it's going to be an amazing atmosphere, and uh, yeah, it's going to be tough. But uh, we've been in tough situations before. Um, just in the last round against Ren, we you know we came came into a cauldron that was uh, that was fantastic, and, uh, and we rose to the occasion. Are you ready if it goes to penalties at all tomorrow? We saw Kepa take one, for the, albeit unsuccessfully, for Chelsea in the Carabao. Would you also be ready to take one if needed tomorrow? Um, I haven't even thought about it, but let's uh, let's hope it doesn't get to that. And just a final one from me as well. Cass, I think we accept it's been a somewhat difficult season defending set pieces as a team, but... There's been improvements in recent weeks. In fact, I think you've defended 24 corners without conceding goals as a team. Sorry if I've jinxed it ahead of tomorrow. But what do you think has actually changed recently to, to get those improvements? I think obviously... As well documented the the struggles we've had, we we've, we've changed to a, a man marking system and tried some different combinations, which seem to have worked a little bit better. Um, I think uh, I think football goes in kind of waves of of, uh, of what works. Uh, recently, it's been zonal marking. Before it was man marking, then it was a hybrid, and yeah, we've uh, we haven't had much success with any of them. So we've gone to a man marking system that that's uh, that's worked a little bit better. Um, and um, hopefully, you now you haven't jinxed it. Cheers, all the best for tomorrow. Cheers. Thanks, Jason. We'll go to Carl Walker from Sky. Hi, Casper. Uh, a few days on from that first leg, what lessons have you put into practice in training from analysing that game to ensure that you can get the win tomorrow? Score. <laughs> we just got we got a score. Um, simple as I think we we I think we played well. Um, we probably got to start a little bit quicker than we did, but I think once we got into our stride, we played really well. Um, and it, it was a very, very good performance and, and all that was missing was uh, was that we scored a couple of goals. They're a team that have got lots of experience in Europe. How do you combat a squad with that experience but also a set of fans that expect them to go far in Europe as well? How will you combat that? Well, we expect from ourselves and like I just said before, we, we had a, a similar situation in, in Rennes where uh, you know, there was a... There was a lot of noise uh, and, and a very expectant crowd and uh, I expect tomorrow will be no different. But for us, we we approach it, the game like we approach any other game. So the expectations uh, that we set ourselves, you know, couldn't really be higher. And final one, as captain of the squad, how happy does it make you to see some of the youngsters coming through like Kieran and Dewsbury Hall has done assisting a goal for him? How happy does that make you? Yeah, it's great to see. You know, Keenan's done incredibly well this season. Um, I think it's incredibly important that that, that he's given time uh, and and he's given the space to to play and mature. And uh, yeah, we we've got a player on our hands if uh, if you know if he's if he's able to to be kept out of all the limelight of you guys, then uh, then uh, then he's got a big future. Thanks, Carl. Go to Charlie, please. Thanks very much. Casper, uh, big game, business end of the season. How much do you relish these sort of occasions? Yeah, the, these are the type of games you want to play in, um, where everything's on the line and uh, you can you can end up with, with big prizes. And uh, I think that's what we all play football for. We play football for the big occasions and uh, tomorrow's a massive occasion for us, yeah. Every time I hear about players once they've retired, they always say that the moments that they really look back on and miss the most are being around their teammates, the, the changing room atmosphere, that sort of stuff. These occasions allow plenty of time with your teammates. You've got training this morning, you jump on the plane, you're in the hotel tonight, you're with them all day tomorrow. Can you just describe kind of what that's like for, for people that have never been involved in that sort of situation? The the kind of togetherness, jumping on the plane, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> yeah, you you are, uh, you, you well, yeah, I take this this week on its own. We are with each other more than we are with our families. Um, you know, leaving home, Today uh, we played at the weekend, and then 
we don't ret- return home till late Friday and then we're in the hotel again Saturday, play Sunday again. So this is uh, this is the life of, of, of football at the highest level. Um, you know, people see us on a Saturday or a Sunday whenever we play, but there's a hell of a lot of preparation that goes into it every single day. Um, you know, it's not the uh, it's not the glitz and glamour it's made out to be. That's for sure. It, it, it's hard work, and uh, I know people will will probably won't understand that if you haven't been in the football environment. But y- if you don't have a squad that works well together, then then it's then it's a tough life because you you are together all the time. But we're lucky that, that we have a great squad, uh, lots of great characters that that are enjoyable to be around. Because um, and thank God, because otherwise it would be. Uh, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be very nice playing football. Appreciate your time on Leicester Morning. No worries. Thank you. Jordan from Leicester Mercury, please. Hi Casper, you're right. Hi mate. Um you've played in lots of these big knockout ties now with Leicester and with Denmark. Is there anything that you would say to your younger teammates ahead of a game like this? I think the the important thing in in, in any game um, but particularly these games is play, don't play the occasion play the game whatever game you're playing it's 11 v 11 to start off with and uh, and take it from there don't you know I personally don't uh, don't really notice uh, the crowd and the external factors when I'm in the game it, it's only really during the warm up and stuff you, you feel that but just concentrate play your game as as, uh, as we've done or you've done all your life uh, and, and then the game will take care of itself and the occasion then uh, comes secondary. Recently got Wesley Fofana and Johnny Evans back from injury. What's it like as a goalkeeper playing behind them? Yeah, I mean, I think we are incredibly blessed at this club to have five very, very good centre-backs um, and the competition for places is is huge. So, uh, So it's great to have you know everybody back fit for once it's very rare that we have every everybody fit in 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 the in central defense so uh, it gives us lots of options but yeah they are they are both top class defenders thanks john we'll return to zoom now and we'll go to owen palmer atkin from radio leicester please hi Casper. i hope you're well um i, I wonder just sort of following on from what a more senior member of the squad. How important is your role in the league up to a game like this? Because you know you've been you've been in these situations before with Leicester. No, I think it's uh, for, it's different. I mean, for us, it's another day at the office. That that's how that's our world. That's the world we live in. Every single week, there is high pressured situations. Um, and today's oh, sorry, this week is no different. So, uh, so nothing really changes. It, it it is what it is, and we, you know, the machine just continues, and and you prepare the same way you prepare for any game. Um, I think the build up and all that kind of stuff that that more comes from from fans and media. But for us, it's you know we go about our usual routine how we go about for any game. Uh, um, how much would it mean to you, Casper, of course, to, to captain Leicester City to their first European semi-final ever? They, they were on the eve of possibly a uh, three Sorry, did you say that last bit again? Yeah, so your, your signal's gone, mate. You're just breaking up. So- Sorry, and you're just breaking up a little bit. Do you want to try once more? One more time. You're in Manchester Airport. The worst airport ever, by the way. I can I, I can attest to that. I feel for you, mate. We're struggling to hear you, and so we'll we'll go to Tom Colum. Obviously, and we'll try and come back, and if you've got time, Tom. Can you hear me okay? I can hear you fine, mate. This club's made so much history in the last five, six years. How much, how important is it to have European football regularly every season to continue that rate of progress? I think if you ask any footballer, any club, you want to be competing uh, in, you know, European football, uh, you want to be competing internationally, you want to be competing at the highest level. And, um, these nights are just different. They they provide something different for for you as players. They provide something different for the fans. They provide experiences. Um, 
and to be able to to play against teams you don't usually play against. So so I think it, it's really really important for for every club as a whole to to experience these evenings. And finally, for me, your record against penalties, certainly saving them recently, has been very good. You've been unlucky, like on Sunday and a couple of occasions. But as a goalkeeper, do you get into a rhythm with penalties where you feel quite good if you face a few in a row and you, you kind of feel confident when the kicker's approaching and all those different elements? I always feel confident. Simple as. Thanks, all Tom. Thanks, Tom. We'll go to oh, Nick. Yes. Thank you. Nick from PA. Morning, Catherine. Morning, mate. Um, you've, you've one of the few left uh, from a few years ago who've really seen kind of the evolution of the club uh, over the last six six years, I guess, really. I just wondered if you could kind of so briefly talk us through that and how, how you've seen this this club as a whole grow, um, as, as I would say, you know, possibly on the brink of the first European semi final. Yeah, I think. As a club, in in at least my time, I can only talk about my time here. We've grown incredibly. Just look where we're sitting today. You guys obviously aren't, but we're we're sitting in probably the best training ground in the country. Um, we've been in European uh, competitions. Uh, we've won trophies. Um, we're constantly striving, constantly trying to uh, fight on all fronts. Where where it's interesting, where all the uh, yeah, that's where all the fun is. You know to. To have experiences like this, like winning the FA Cup, like winning the Community Shield, the Premier League, all these things, these are these are moments in history that that we are fighting for every single day to uh, to get a chance to to compete for. So, I think it's really important that a club like this keeps progressing um, and keeps that hunger and desire to become better all the time on on every level, not just a football level, and uh, and and that's what this club is all about. Um, we we probably aren't the biggest flashiest club around, but we uh, we've consistently been able to to mix it with the big boys, and we've uh, we've done a good job of it so far. I think. Go to James Nursey, please. Hi, Casper. Thanks for your time. Um, some of us remember you obviously um, starring in the Champions League quarters finally back in the quarters. Now I just wonder: is this team, the manager, the tactics, the personnel, are you perhaps better equipped for success in Europe this time around with a bit more experience and that tactical? Um, versatility options you've got and different ways you can play. Thank you. Um, I think when you look back at the Champions League campaign, how much just football in general has changed, um, it, it's incredible to see the evolution of it. Uh, watching back those games, it's a completely different game we played back then. Um, so, yeah, we, we definitely have more uh, tactical capability and flexibility, that's for sure. Um, but I'm I'm very hesitant to compare the two experiences. They're they're very very different. Um, and like I say, football really has changed in in so many ways in in those five six years. So uh, so I'm a bit hesitant to to kind of compare the two. Both both have uh, yeah both have their merits in 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 different ways. Graham Hill, please. Morning, Casper. Morning. Um, there's been a bit of um, uh, talk recently about your, your long-term future with Leicester and the fact that you've got maybe a one year left on the contract. So how do you view that situation and uh, would you want to sign another contract with the club? To be honest, I haven't given it a moment's thought yet. Um, yeah, it is what it is and we'll we'll take take that conversation one day when it comes, but as things are at the moment, there's, uh, there's slightly too much to think about in terms of the games that we've got coming up to to start shifting focus to to that. That that will take care of itself at some point, what, whatever may happen, and then uh, then then we'll deal with it then. But right now, the focus is on getting into the semi final. The focus is on on winning our games in hand in the league and and trying to get as high up as we can. And then uh, then we've got internationals in the summer, and then. I think there's some well-earned rest and then then we, we can take that conversation from there. And we'll finish up with Toby from GB News, please. Hi, Kasper. Hi, mate. Uh, you mentioned uh, your plans for like, getting into the semis, doing well, scoring, uh, defending the five defenders, the three samples. How much more do you need the attackers to also deliver? I know Jimmy Vardy, there's the injury worries we've had, but I think that Kali and Asher also deliver the goods here and there. But 
how important is it for you to outscore tomorrow? Well, very important because that means we go through. So, um, listen, it, it's not a team. It's a team game. It's not about the attackers and the defenders. It, it's about whoever contributes. Contributes. We had a uh, Wesley come in and score from a from a set piece in in Ren, and that was massively important. So it doesn't really matter where the goals come from as long as they come and uh, and that we provide a, a solid, stable base and don't concede. Then uh, then then we have every chance. Thanks, guys. We'll wrap things up there. Thank you. We'll wrap things up there and we'll come back with Brendan at 9.30. Cool.